Yuzu, practically amazing. You're watching 11 Alive WXIA TV. Atlanta's News Channel. This is 11 News Tonight. Four days in a row, severe weather pounds North Georgia again. Tomorrow, we see the evidence O.J. Simpson will be back in court. And a 16-year-old girl barely alive tonight. Evidence of Asian gangs in the suburbs. The girl was minding the family store. Hello, everyone. I'm Angela Robinson. And I'm Mike Landers. She was shot during the robbery of a jewelry store in Cobb County today. 11 News reporter Nina Jimenez is told by police there is strong evidence of gang activity. Police say an Asian male walked into the on jewelry store and shot 16-year-old Amanda Puckett in the head during an apparent armed robbery. It appears that uh, someone had entered the store and she was showing them a piece of jewelry. Police believe the girl was forced into a back room and shot. She was working alone in the store, which her Vietnamese mother owns. A woman working next door heard the gunshot and went for help. Two men chased the suspect into his car. So we came out, she pointed the guy out. And uh, me and my partner chased him to his uh, vehicle. Some of Amanda's schoolmates and neighbors came to the scene when they heard the news. There's nothing, I don't think anything like this has happened down here. I mean, and then especially to somebody that I know. One neighbor took home Amanda's dog, who was found with her at the scene. When the girl's mother arrived at the scene, it wasn't clear whether anything was actually missing from the store. Police are looking at a number of different motives other than robbery that led to the shooting, and they aren't ruling out that it was gang-related. One coincidence, the suspect was driving the same kind of car linked to a possible Asian gang shooting in DeKalb County last Sunday. Police tell 11 News the car is favored among gang members. When Amanda's uncle came to the scene, police questioned him as to who he thinks might have done it. Oh, I got no idea. Right now, I don't know who exactly I got to wait and uh, find out about it. I don't know. I'm live at the Chastain Shopping Plaza. Investigators are still inside the jewelry store searching for clues. There was a video camera inside the store, but I'm told it either wasn't functioning or wasn't turned on during the shooting. One thing's for sure, there are still many questions to be answered in this tragedy. Mike, back to you. All right, thanks very much, Nina. The owner of a barber shop in Atlanta is dead tonight after an apparent robbery attempt. Investigators say two men came into the Hilltop Barber Shop this afternoon. One got a haircut, and afterwards, the two pulled guns and shot the barber. They escaped in a brown Datsun 240Z. 24-year-old Leonard Allen of Decatur was dead at the scene. Tomorrow, the eyes of the nation focus on a Los Angeles courtroom where O.J. Simpson returns for a preliminary hearing. It will determine whether he'll have to stand trial for the murder of his ex-wife and her friend. It will be the football hero's fifth time in court in 10 days. His defense team has a chance to learn exactly what evidence the prosecution has against Simpson. It will be determined whether or not enough evidence exists for the defense to conduct their own test. The prosecution could take as long as a week to present its case defense hasn't offered a time frame. Now, both the prosecution and defense say they are ready and are making last-minute preparations. Today, Simpson's friend and business attorney, Leroy Taft, said Simpson was also ready. Like I already said, his spirits are up. He's ready to go. He wants his day in court, and he's eagerly waiting for it. Reports today that Simpson was taken off his suicide watch a few days ago, and it's reported he's receiving 3,500 pieces of mail a day at the Los Angeles County Jail. Now, meanwhile, investigators are tight-lipped about what they recovered at Simpson's house during a search with metal detectors on yesterday. With no eyewitnesses, the prosecution's case depends heavily upon the work of laboratory detectives, scientists who've analyzed bloodstains and other evidence. If the prosecution does prove that, it helps in their case against Simpson and he'll go to trial. A well-known Atlanta defense attorney told me tonight that based on what's happened so far, things look hopeful for O.J. Bruce Harvey says California state law is giving O.J.'s all-star defense team opportunities unheard of in Georgia law, like previewing and testing the state's evidence before the preliminary hearing. And in fact, they can truly test um, the, the state's case in a fair environment uh, frankly, with the jury pool standing outside with signs saying free O.J. Um, to see whether or not the state can proceed. Is O.J. going to walk on this? 
As a defense attorney, I, I say yes, and I hope so. Uh, because the, the truth of the matter is, if he does, and if the state does not have enough to go forward, that's the way the system is supposed to work. If the judge says there is not enough evidence to try Simpson, he will be set free. But if the prosecution gets evidence at a later date, such as positive DNA test results, they can go after him again. It wouldn't be double jeopardy because there wouldn't have been a trial. Complete coverage of that hearing will be carried here on 11 Alive beginning at noon and running through most of the afternoon. You can see O.J. Simpson's hearing live. NBC plans to air a highlight match from Wimbledon tennis during the hearing's lunch break. Four days in a row now, severe storms have blown across North Georgia. And tonight, there's more damage. This time, the storms hit hard in Cherokee County. Mostly, it was trees knocking down power lines and knocking holes in houses. But at a Walmart store in Canton, the staff was prepared when the tornado warnings were announced. According to policy, all the customers in the store were rounded up and sent to the houseware section, where they keep all the soft pillows and blankets. Thankfully, the tornado didn't hit. Now, the storms also hit in Bartow County yet again. For the second time this week, homes in historic Adairsville were damaged by the storm. Again, toppled trees were the biggest problem. In Shannon, Georgia, the heavy rain caused the ceiling to cave in at a convenience store. But the best view of the power of this storm came from Hartsville Airport. These pictures from our Hartsville Center cam show the storm as it first approached. You can see how ominous it appears. And just a few minutes later, the skies opened up, sending heavy rain down all over the city. And thunderstorms and airplanes don't always mix. Our Beth Galvin joins us now live from the airport. Beth, I'm sure a few delays this afternoon. Delays and short tempers. And from the looks of things out here at Hartsfield, it is still a very busy place out here. The storms didn't last long this afternoon, but they were powerful, to powerful enough to completely shut down the airport for about 15 minutes this morning and delay traffic all across the city of Atlanta. So no matter where you were going or how you plan to get there, you faced a wait. Rush hour, not a pretty picture on the downtown connector as thunderstorms bring thousands of commuters to a crawl. Downtown Atlanta, the picture isn't a whole lot better. Fashion seems to be taking a back seat to function as everyone tries to stay dry. And it seems the only people who like the wet stuff are making a buck off it, selling umbrellas to the waterlogged. Well, I'm happy because I'm making the money in the process, you know? So it's no problem, I enjoy it. At Hartsfield Airport, the violent weather translates into long lines and plenty of flight delays, but some, like these Spanish exchange students, take the wait in stride. Not so happy about the delays are Lori and Michelle Otterino, two sisters carting around some very heavy and very fussy carry-ons, twin babies. It really has stunk. <laughs> we spent about two hours in um, Jacksonville waiting to get on a plane and then another half hour on the plane and then about two hours in the air and now we have to wait here another two hours. So, and we want to go home. <laughs> Sounds like not everybody is happy about this. No, we're all losing our seats. <laughs> With seats at a premium, Abe and Bessemer Siaj and their family trying to get from Little Rock to Jordan relax against a wall. But after missing one flight and facing a five-hour wait ahead of them, the little ones are losing their patience. Trying to get our airplane. And if they don't get there one in one second, I'm going to blast their heads out. Kind of an ominous threat from little Oman. An airport spokeswoman tells us that the delays averaged out to be about a half hour to an hour. But one big problem out here was that folks coming in from other cities had bad weather, so their flights were delayed. And once they got here to Hartsfield, they missed their connecting flights and faced hours of waiting on top of that. Angela? Well, hopefully the severe weather is over and things will sort of get back to normal. Yes, that's oh. what they all hope. Okay, thanks, Beth. Two stories to update that we first reported last night. An autopsy is being performed on a baby girl brought by its mother to a mosque in northwest Atlanta. Officials may not know how the baby died for another couple of weeks. The mother was very confused and distraught last night. She's under psychiatric evaluation tonight at Grady Hospital. And an internal police investigation continues tonight in Gwinnett County. That's where a police officer shot and killed a drunk driving suspect last night. The officer claims the suspect lunged at him and threatened to kill him. Tonight, we are told that as many as six witnesses have talked with police supporting the officer's claim. But his wife says he shouldn't have been killed. Not in my backyard, oh no, it's becoming a familiar cry. We'll show you how one community has come together to keep the city's problems out. A pitching machine throws a fatal ball to a little leaguer. And a close call for Prince Charles while flying to a visit on the Scottish Isles. Stay with us.
A new approach to your priorities guides the continuous improvement in the all-new Cadillac DeVille, where refined quiet and sophisticated comfort are part of a safer world for you and your family. And now, a new approach to leasing. A single upfront payment of $10,875 for 24 months, saving you $1,521 on a new DeVille. So the time to approach your Cadillac dealer is now. So the paper says Congress is moving ahead on health care reform. If they can just cover everyone. But they're talking price control. Right. Government imposed spending limits for every region of the country. So if our plan runs out of money. Rationing, the way I read it. You know, long waits for health care and some services not even available. Government controlled health care. <laughs> Congress can do better than that. They will if we send them that message. For facts you need to send Congress a message, call today. Either you can get this Panasonic palm quarter camcorder and know it has a color viewfinder, or take your chances. Either come into Hi-Fi Buys today and get the Panasonic palm quarter with color viewfinder, or take your chances. Either get a Panasonic palm quarter and know its tapes will play in your VHS VCR, or take your chances. Come in today for the Panasonic Palm Quarter, now available at Hi-Fi Buys. The sun is rising on a remarkable 72-hour sales event, the Jeep and Eagle 72-hour Dawn to Dusk Sale. Get up to $1,200 in values when you buy or lease a Jeep Grand Cherokee, or save when you buy or lease a new Eagle Vision. Get over $1,100 in option package values on Jeep Cherokee Sport, or save $300 on Jeep Wrangler. But hurry, you only have 72 hours before the sun sets on this remarkable sale. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Not in my backyard. It's a sentiment often expressed when a detention center is proposed for any neighborhood. Residents of Atlanta Southside have said it many times, but not loud enough. Well, tonight they have spoken loud and clear. Kevin Rosen tells us they've been heard. Enough is enough. These are the little people, and for a change, they have won. About 25 people, concerned residents of neighborhoods along Stewart Avenue on Atlanta's South Side, where the state proposed building a youth detention center. We need something that's going to uh, be positive for a change. And a detention center planned for a piece of land adjacent to Atlanta Metropolitan College is not a positive change for these people. They have already opened their arms to three homeless facilities. They complain of the influx of adult dance clubs and liquor stores. We probably have more liquor stores per square foot than any community in the city of Atlanta. If we didn't have all of that, I would say, well, maybe we should take our fair share. They feel dumped on, and with the help of State Senator David Scott and other community leaders, Department of Children and Youth Services Commissioner George Knapper is convinced the department will have to look harder for another site. But it won't be on the south side of Atlanta? It doesn't look like it. And uh, if I were a betting man, I would bet that it's not going to be here. We've been a, a sleeping giant in terms of uh, the south side of Atlanta. And the people have realized that uh, unless we come together in a unified way, we're going to continue to be victims. Nobody in this community argues the need for a youth detention center. What they do say is that it's time for other communities to do their fair share. On the south side, Kevin Rosen, 11 News. Southside leaders say they will follow up their efforts because commitments have been broken before. But this fight is another indication that people are starting to take responsibility for their own communities. An unveiling at Mayor Campbell's Operation Take Back Town Hall meeting tonight, a police command vehicle turned into a youth mobile. The official name of the big bus-like vehicle is the Youth Services Mobile Resource Center. And the mayor says he will send it out to cool down what could be a long, hot summer. When you talk about the problems of our inner city, we recognize that we can't be stationary. We can't wait for the problems to come to us at City Hall. And so this summer, we're going to take our resources out to the community. Computers and volunteers will provide inner city kids with information on jobs and drug awareness and conflict resolution, a lot of topics that relate to that. A controversial federal program you probably never heard of is now being targeted on Capitol Hill. Did you know that Uncle Sam distributes 40 million rounds of ammunition to novice shooters each year, costing taxpayers $2.5 million? That program was formed after the Spanish-American War to train civilians to shoot. 
Critics contend it amounts to a government subsidy for gun clubs. Supporters say the program teaches gun safety. Well, the Clinton administration takes another step to isolate Haiti, as well as offering help to those who need it. That story tops our news from around the world this Wednesday. Nearly 2,500 Haitian refugees have been picked up by the Coast Guard in the last four days. Officials decided to reopen the U.S. naval base at Guantanamo Bay for refugee processing. Meanwhile, the Clinton administration revoked the visas of most Haitians hoping to travel to the U.S. Those with visas already in the U.S. are not affected. In Chicago, officials say they busted a 12-year Colombian drug operation responsible for smuggling billions of dollars worth of cocaine and marijuana into North America. Agents seized 21 tons of cocaine and 22 planes, seen in these photos as evidence. They believe they put an end to the infamous Colombian drug cartel's transportation. In Brooklyn, New York, police say a pitching machine is responsible for the death of a 12-year-old little leaguer. A ball hit Michael Marnaro, uh, it's Marano, in the chest, sending him into cardiac arrest. The boy later died at an area hospital. That fatal pitch was the last one of the evening for Marano and his friends. And in Scotland, tense moments when the plane Prince Charles was flying ran into landing problems. His royal jet blew a tire, but the prince was able to stop it on the runway, and neither he nor his 11 passengers were hurt. 